Hey, how's it going? This is DJ Dark Intensity back with a new video. This particular one, I will be showing you guys how to repair the Subpack S2. We're gonna start by cutting off the zipper cover. That way you can access the zipper, which is inside out. They don't want you to get access to it. <laughs> so you're gonna gently pull back this material and there's a zipper right there. Okay, now with your thumb, we're going to open it up. And you will be able to access the internals. As you can see, there's plenty of padding there. There's some sticky stuff. So just try to pull it out as carefully as possible because this material is quite easy to rip. Okay, so as you can see, they, there's the original transducers. Okay, so I'm using some angled needle nose pliers to pull back this thing. Oh, remember to take out the battery. I almost forgot. Very carefully, don't rip it. This is the battery wire. I'm just gonna pull out just so it doesn't get in the way. And uh, there's another wire, which is the audio signal. Okay, we're gonna unplug that one too. I'm gonna try to do it with one hand here. Okay, <laughs> there we go. I ordered the bass shakers from Dayton Audio. Okay, so we're gonna use the X-Acto knife to cut away some of that adhesive that's stuck really good onto that foam pad. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna try to save some of that material cause I'm probably gonna use it again. There it is, that thing is stuck. As you can see, this transducer is pretty bad the moving component doesn't move. It's fused together and as you can see it's pretty warped. So this one's done. I'm pretty sure the other one is the same. So I'm gonna snip away these wires. Alright, so here's the other one. This one is in no better shape so I'm gonna carefully remove it and try to keep some of that sticky material and padding. These things are very tough, so be patient. All right, I'm gonna cut these off also. All right, garbage. Okay, so now we have a zipper that doesn't work anymore. I tried, I failed many times. So what I did is I went to my local Walmart and bought myself 
a brand new zipper for one dollar it was a 24 inch so i think i'll be using about a good 18 to 20 inches of it I'm going to use some safety pins to align it. That way I know where to start sewing this bad boy. And once I'm done, it'll look like this. I did have some leftover, so I'm gonna tuck that in the inside. But I'm gonna start off here first. All right, here we go. My super sewing skills. Boom, first shot, see, it told you. All right, let's get to work. I'm just gonna fast forward this process. This took me like a good 45 minutes, but once you're done, you know, not that bad. It's not that bad. I think it came out okay. I'm sure you can do better if you take your time. Amazon came through right on time. These are my new transducers. Let's open it up and get right into it. Okay, so these are the TT25-8 transducers. These are Dayton Audio products. I will have a description in the link. I'm just gonna use the transducers themselves. It comes with some kind of bracket, which I'm not gonna be using. Uh, but before I install them, I'm gonna do a sound test or a shake test. <laughs> the white wire will go with the red wire and then the other two wires obviously will go together. All right, there it is. We got a good signal. All right, so this next step is optional. The only reason why I did it is so I can resurface the area where the old transducers were installed. One little mistake I did is I put this stuff on the transducers and it took out the rubber coating, but that's not that very significant anyway, as I will be using 3M, double-sided sticky tape. But to be fair, it actually created a really nice slick surface. So it kind of worked out. I am now using some heat shrink wire tubing to hold the wires together. All right, so I'm gonna heat these up so they shrink. That way the wires are secure. All right, so here's the part where I show you guys what that rubber cement did to the transducers. It took out that rubber coating, but like I said before, it kind of worked out because the double-sided tape that I'm gonna use will stick on the slick surface really well.
All right, so this is the product that I'm using, 3M double-sided sticky tape. I'm sure you can use different kinds of brands. This one just seems to work well for me. So I'm going to place some around the area where the transducer is going to be sticking to. So what you want to do is place the transducer's wires facing towards the inside or the center. That way you have enough slack. Set them in firmly. This tape is pretty strong so you don't have to worry about it sliding or coming off. Place the padding accordingly. And now what you're gonna do is connect the battery wire back to the battery and the audio cable, which is the base signal. So as you can see, this is the audio or the base signal. Connect those. Now you're going to grab the battery cable and feed it through the inside pocket out to the velcro pocket on the outside of the sub pack. Be careful not to bend the wires. Now you can put the battery back in its place and it'll just sit real nicely. Tuck it inside real nicely like that. There you go. Okay. I think we are almost done. We just gotta zip up our sub pack back together again with that new zipper from Walmart. My stitching is not that great, but hey, it works. All right, back to the base. Nice. All right, I'm gonna try it out. Put it back on my chair. <laughs> All right, let's check it out. Oh yeah, baby, we back in business. Hey, let's go. Thank you for watching.